Holly Wallace was one of those 13-year-old girls, like most 13-year-old girls in her class, they would doodle. In the name of their high school heartthrob, Polly's was Dennis Baker, over and over again, in her journal. She loved to play double dutch and hopscotch, blow bubbles with chewing gum, and despite her black skin, she'd take on the role of Humphrey Bogart when she and her brother would play detectives outside. Her father often took her to the segregated cinemas. She started to learn how to play the piano from a black sympathizer in their neighborhood. And she got pretty good to the point where she'd almost play for release, top to bottom, without a mistake. That same day, she grabbed her journal, went out to the marsh near her house, just killing time before supper. As Polly was doodling in her journal and drawing mulberries near her favorite willow tree, she was tied down and beaten raped. After repeatedly hitting her in the head with an old rake, Bud McKenzie and his cousin Frank Williamson took her motionless body, went about their day. A day which included going to the local flower shop to pick up orchids for Bud's sick mother. The crime went almost unnoticed in Jasper. Lazy police work for a dead black girl. A couple of months later, old Bud and Frank were arrested in the town next door for lynching Bobby Linwater, a college student that was in town for that summer. They caught Bobby stealing change out of the family's restaurant. I guess that didn't sit right with them. It was 1961, JFK was president Tossing and Turning was uh, the number one hit song that summer. That's just the way it was. A few days ago, we got a call from a woman, Nancy Sparrow. She and her husband, Paul, decided to buy up the old McKenzie restaurant with the intention of converting it into an ice cream parlor. Much to Nancy's surprise when she looked inside one of the working freezers in an old trash bag was a, an assortment of limbs, female torso, and the caved-in head, Polly Wallace, 15 years later. Now, I s signed up for this job. I did. But I didn't sign up for this. Just the other day, some hooker, a dope addict, went to give her three-month-old a bath. Instead of toweling off the little one, she put him in a brand new microwave that... A sight that can even make a veteran cop vomit, and they did. I sure as hell did. There's no trophies for collecting bullet casings among needles and cat piss, and there sure as hell wasn't Humphrey Bogart working cases like these. I suppose I... I hate this town. The smell. The people I work for. The people I protect. When I was a kid, I remember hearing stories of swamp goblins and boogeymen. Tales told the kids to get them home for supper on time. But as I'm thawing out a partially decomposed foot of a 13-year-old girl, one can't help but think that those swamp goblins are just opium addicts' brains rotting from the fumes of napalm that Uncle Sam sent them to. And the boogeyman, he's just a hillbilly clan member that decided one day, after eating peach pie, that he would go down to that marsh and rape a 13-year-old girl until her 
legs gave out and her wrists were washed from the rope burn. So I'm gonna be working late tonight. Trying to figure out how I call up old James Wallace and tell him that even though uh, his mother doesn't recognize him and his daddy drank himself to death, that I, uh, well, he can rest easy. Because guess what? I found the 15-year-old frozen head of his 13-year-old sister. Uh, it's almost Christmas time now. Uh, Jasper, middle school holiday dances. Just a few days away. My little one, uh, Amy, she'll be there. And I'd like to think Polly will too. In her own way. At peace. Probably daydreaming of Dennis Baker asking her to dance. Hell, what do I know? Thank you.